Crazy Mike, crazymikesapps.com with an iPhone app demo for Z-Day Survival Simulator by Mangadillo Studios. This application is in the games category is iOS Universal, working on the iPhone. iPod Touch and iPad 2 currently sells for $1.99. It's also available for Android devices on the Google Play Store, Amazon.com for the Kindle Fire, and Barnes & Nobles for the Nook Color. You better snap to attention and get your head on straight if you're going to survive in this text-based simulator game where your decisions affect whether you live to escape the zombie-filled suburbs or die with the rest in this zombie apocalypse survival game. Here's the opening screen. We can tap on play, and we're going to jump right into the action. I'm going to go ahead and say yes and proceed and overwrite my other game. It starts off always at the top. It gives you what, what's going on. To survive a Z-Day event, you will need certain survival skills and experience. This simulator will test your knowledge of survival theory. Now, down here in the black box, that's where you have to make a decision, and then your decisions are down here in the darker colored boxes with the white text and the blood outline. Now, these are your four starting points currently in the game, and currently I'm using my fists because I don't have any weapons. Home is easier. If you go to the police station, you're going to start right in the thick of it. We're going to go ahead and go in the middle and go to the checkpoint. We have Dave, who was our neighbor. Now he also brandishes a revolver. I can tap here. Now I have a revolver. Tap on X. Now, when you do that, if the weapon, you don't want the weapon and you X out of it, it will go to somebody in your group of survivors because you're going to be accumulating survivors as you go. So the way the game plays is you're given a scenario and you have to make a decision based on what is presented to you. You're moving slowly and carefully down a dark street. You see bright lights up ahead. You've reached a military checkpoint. There are two armed guards and an armored Humvee behind chain link fence and several crash impact barrels. So you can do look for a way around or approach the checkpoint. I've never approached the checkpoint, but I'm guessing these guys will shoot us. So I'm going to go ahead and look for a way around. And again, it gives you some information. And then it, 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 the man tells you there is a violent faction. So you hear somebody give you some information. Ask about his idea. You'll find items as you go. And the orange items actually go over here to the right. And they're useful as you go through the game. This is the way the game goes. It's rather uh, addictive because you're going to want to figure out how to get through. I've made decisions that cause me to die and my group. Uh, so you want to be careful on what you do. He's given us a decision here whether we're going to we're going to ram the checkpoint and either I can shoot or I can drive. I'm going to go ahead and ask him to drive because I don't want to drive through it. Now we have a weapon that we can take. I'm going to go ahead and take that weapon. Well, actually, I didn't take the weapon, so I X'd it out. Bad, my bad. So now he's going to go ahead. You will need to set yourself up. They actually give you three choices of where to set yourself up. I'm going to do top of the truck. And they'll tell you what, whether your decision is good or not. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot at the guard behind the fence. Now I'm just going to keep on shooting. And again, you just have to make the decisions as you go. It tells you what's happening. I'm going to keep on firing. The object is to get rid of these soldiers that they will leave. So it says you've laid down excellent cover. Fire mission was complete success. The guards get in their Humvee and drive away. Again, this is the way the game continues, and you have a decision here, head to the pawn shop, because there's weapons at the pawn shop. I found a hockey stick, but I'm not going to take that hockey stick, and I found a headlamp. Very cool. Again, you continue to walk, and you have to get to the pawn shop, so you always have things that happen on the way. We're actually at the pawn shop. I'm going to break into the pawn shop. We've got another person. And we can do a couple of things when we come across another survivor. We can ask them to join our party, tell them to take a hike, or mug them and take their stuff. I have never mugged anybody, so let's mug Petra. You mugged Petra. Did we get anything? We got a Magnum revolver. That's not bad. Kind of probably should have kept her into our, into our, um, in our group. So that was just an example to show you what you can do. We found a riot helmet as well. And again, the orange items will populate on the right side. You can also tap on the information icon and see how many survivors you have in your party as well as your inventory. You can turn the audio off here if you don't want it on as well as the sound effects. Tap on the eye again. You can head to the main menu, but we're going to resume. So again, the alarm goes off. I'm trying to disable the alarm. Again, you get multiple choices of what you want to do. And anything you do do will actually... Now I'm wielding two weapons, which is pretty cool. 
when you X a weapon out, if you X it out, it'll go to somebody in your group. Now we're gonna look for more weapons, and there's gonna be some other guys that show up who are survivors, and it goes on like this, and what happens is you can make your decisions and do certain things. I'm just gonna say, uh, let's just ambush them, and when you ambush them, you take on the four rival survivors. Dave has got been killed, you have but I defeated him, so I'm by myself, Dave's dead. There's nobody left in my group. I'm gonna go ahead and take that there. And that's the way this game plays. I've got some night vision goggles, but let me fast forward to the end here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do myself in and show you what happens at the end. This is easy here. Uh, let's see, I can't help him. Well, I'll throw him a line. This is, you're helping a guy who's on a log with zombies. And then I'm gonna pull them all in, but I'm gonna have to fight three zombies. And I've killed three zombies, which is the way, again, this game goes. And I've got Ron, I'm gonna ask Ron to join our party because you wanna get as many survivors as you can. The more survivors you get, the stronger your group is. And I'm gonna eventually kill off the whole party right now because we're gonna go, you are attacked by 27 zombies. You have, <laughs> we killed 20, I have been killed. So there you have it. Now you get your final results at the end. And it tells you what happens. You see my results and your results are uh, you can tap on them to get more detailed results. So right here, zombie bait, and it gives me an explanation of a summary. I can tap on zombies killed. I did poor there, or failed there. Poor and survivors found. Average and useful items found. And objective reach failed. So I wasn't trying to because it would take too long on camera. But that's the way this game plays. There are literally hundreds of different outcomes. You can go through this, and it's up to you on what decisions you make. You can save this. It'll save to your photo roll or your camera roll as an, an image. So that's kind of a neat feature as well. The instructions are up here and you can scroll through here. And again, it tells you what I just explained to you, how you have a scenario based up top and then you have a, a, a specific situation and you have to choose from what you are given. Your weapons are down there. The information is there. Um, arming yourself, adding others, and so on. You can contact them for more information if you like. Resume playing, and the credits are down there. Check this one out. Till next time, this is Crazy Mike from Crazy Mike's app saying see ya.